What's up everybody? Hope you're all doing well today. We're going to be looking at um, power, the concept of power. We'll go over the definition of power. Uh, we'll go over three example problems. And along the way we'll be talking about some, some of the concepts. So the definition of power is basically um, the rate of change of energy. I like to think of it in terms of how quickly energy is being changed, okay? Or since work is essentially changing energy from either different um, forms, different types, how quickly you're able to do that, okay? How quickly you're able to do work. In equation form, that would be simply like work over time or the change in energy over time. Units, well, since energy is joules, the unit would be joules per second. Now we rename this into a watt. That's kind of the SI unit. We'll be using watts. Sometimes you'll hear horsepower. We're just kind of comparing, um, you know, the power of a horse, you could say. And one horsepower is essentially about 746 watts. The best way really to kind of understand power is through example. So let's go ahead and do three example problems. Example number one, imagine that we have a weightlifter. They're gonna lift a weight up 50 kilograms and he's gonna lift it up over his head. So we'll lift it like boom, 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 up here. And let's say that's a total of two meters. So off the ground, two meters. And he's gonna do it in one and a half seconds. So we're gonna be looking at three questions. So the first question is how much work is done? So work, remember work is a uh, force parallel to distance and in this case to lift a weight so remember you have the weight here um, of 50 kilograms down times 9.8 right mg coming down and then for him to lift the weight we're gonna have to lift up with the same force as the weight right we're literally lifting weights so the force that we'd have to use would be mg the weight and then we're gonna lift it up whatever, two meters in this case. So I'll just write it as MGD. So let's do this out. This is gonna be 50 kgs times 9.8, and then we're lifting it up two meters. All right, do the math on that, and we get, well, 100 times 9.8 is 980 newtons. Sorry, not newtons, joules, right? So that's the amount of work we need to lift this up. So letter B then is looking for the power. And power, remember, is change in energy or over time, or in this case, a work over time. So we're simply just gonna go 980 joules, and the time that took was 1.5 seconds. And that gives us 653 joules per second, or 653 watts. So letter C, we're now going to take longer to do this. So we're going to take three seconds in this problem. And we're going to answer the same two questions. Well, question one, how much work is done? Well, notice that the work is the same. So the work is the same because um, we're still lifting the same weight, right? So we're still lifting the same weight to the same height. Even though we're doing it slower, we're still doing the same amount of work. Now the power we need is going to be less, right? Because um, earlier we did it at 1.5 seconds, now we're gonna do it at three seconds. So this would be 980 divided by three, or the power would essentially be half of what we got. So 653 divided by two gives us about 327 watts. So let's think about this concept a little bit. So again, power you can think of is how quickly you're able to do the work. So since we're doing the same work, if we're able to do it faster, so let's say this weight lifter can do it in 1.5 seconds, they are more powerful compared to say a second weight lifter, maybe they can only do it in three seconds. They are less powerful, okay? Or you could say, well, what if we took that first weight lifter, right? Let's say we want that first weight lifter with this power of 653. What if we have them lift half 
the weight, right? So maybe instead of 50, they, they're lifting 25 kgs. Well, they should theoretically be able to do it in half the time because their power has not changed. They can convert now less, uh, less work, do le they should be able to do less work faster, right? All right, let's look at question number two. So in this question, we have an athlete. They're going to be pulling a 100 kilogram sled. We're going to pull it a distance of five meters. And the time that they take is going to be three seconds. So sometimes you see these people in the gym, they're pulling these big old sleds and they're going to be pulling, in this case, five meters in three seconds. We want to know the power of that athlete. All right, so again, we're just going to use our power equals work over time. And work, remember, is force distance. Now, it's not just force times distance, it's force parallel to distance. So in this case, even though we're pulling with 200 newtons of force, the, the force that's parallel is going to be this component of force. So this would be 200 times the cosine of the angle, which in this case is 30 degrees. And then the distance that they pull it is going to be 5 meters, and the time is 3 seconds. So we'll just go ahead and plug this guy in the calculator, and we get 289 joules per second, or watts, 289 watts. All right, for this problem, why don't we go ahead and convert to a horsepower? Remember, one horsepower is equal to 746 watts, so that means 289 watts. One HP is 746 watts. So we get, what do we get? We get approximately 0.39 horsepowers. So approximately 40% the value of a horse this person's able to pull the sled at. All right, example three, we have a car going up a hill and this car is gonna have an engine, let's say it's 200 horsepowers. Now that is the maximum power of that the engine can supply. You could obviously, you know, exert less horsepower. If you're barely cruising down the road, it'd be much lower than that. But this would be if you have your like accelerator fully pushed to the floor and you're maximizing like every last bit of power of that engine. So anyways, we're going up the hill and this time we're going to say we're going at a speed maximum again at 30 meters per second. So you can imagine if we were going slower, we wouldn't be using, you know, your foot wouldn't be fully pressed down on the gas pedal or accelerator. So anyways, the first question we're looking for is what is the thrust provided by the engine? So in other words, how much force is the engine supplying here? So again, let's go ahead and start with our equation. So our equation is power equals work over time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to derive another equation. Whenever you see things asking about force and velocity, there's another equation we can derive. So let's break down our equation. Remember, work is force parallel to distance over time. But check this out. What if we combine this distance over time? What's that? Well, distance over time, you should clearly know, is velocity, right? So we could write this as force parallel to velocity. This is another equation for power that you will use. And again, it's kind of dependent on the problem. But notice we just derived this from our work over time base equation. So that simplifies this problem dramatically, right? So we know the power. The power is 200 HPs. Let's go ahead and convert that into watts. So 200 horsepower times 746 um, watts per horsepower. That gives us a total power of... 149,200 watts. All right, and then that's going to be equal to force times velocity. And in this case, our velocity, we said, was 30 meters per second. Okay, which means the force, again, this is the force provided by the engine, the thrust force here, is going to be 
149, 200 watts divided by 30 meters per second gives us about 5,000. So we'll go to three digits here, 4,970 newtons. Question B, we're looking at um, how much resistance there is. Um, air resistance would be the most common one, but it could also be uh, rolling resistance. So we want to know how much there is. So let me just move this thing out of the way a bit. Actually, let's move most of it out. All right, so for this one, we're going to kind of, this is mostly a review problem, honestly. So we'll take, um, let me redraw this here. So remember, our car is going up this hill and we just determine the kind of the thrust force of the car right um, and then there's going to be some air resistance coming back down and then there's also the component of gravity coming down the hill right so it's at an angle so part of gravity is pulling it down now it's not all of gravity based on the angle this is going to be mg sine theta that's a component coming down and if you need a refresher, uh, maybe I'll link to a video on how, where that number comes from. But, um, so then when we look at this, we just, if we like sum up our forces here, kind of going up the ramp, well, we have the thrust force minus the air resistance minus kind of this component of gravity pulling us down the ramp. Okay, and we're moving at a constant rate, so the MA is just going to simply be zero. All right, so at this point, yeah, we, you can see basically uh, if the thrust is 4970, the air is what we're looking for, and then mg sine theta, let's go ahead and do that. Um, what was the mass of that car? Looks like it was 2000 times 9.8 sine of 10 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that one in. We get approximately 3,400 newtons, right? So we had 4,970 newtons minus F air, which is going to essentially be the difference between those two, right? That's going to be equal to zero. So our air resistance here would be 4,970 minus 3,400 equals 1,070 newtons. So that would be the air resistance in this problem. All right, I hope that was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, either in class or in the comments below. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one.